Hello everyone, today we're going to be building a Webflow app. And if you don't know still what a Webflow app is, I'm going to show an example. This is something that is right now built in inside Webflow, where you can just extend the capabilities of the designer by just installing apps that allow you to do stuff like this. I'm going to generate a table and I'm going to add it in here like that. Let me just create this. Let me insert that table and boom now i have a full accessible html table yay so this was generated with an extension that we released at finsuite which is called finsuite tables and i'm going to show you in today's stream how to create an app from scratch we're going to go through the basics we're going to see exactly how to spin up a development server how to install that development app and all the options that we have to interact with the designer <laughs> Okay, so Finsu Table, you probably, if you saw the Webflow apps announcement, Finsu Table was in, in that announcement, was one of the apps kind of featured in, in this release. Um, and essentially, with the Finsu Table, it allows you to create official HTML tables inside your designer. So instead of having to rely on, a, on an HTML generator and then using embeds to copy and paste the code, etc., now you can do it natively right inside your designer like this and as marcin is saying it works like a charm good nice cool so what i want to do in this series of streams i i'm already telling you this is not going to be just one stream it's going to be a bunch of them i want to show you how to build one extension from scratch so if you have any cool ideas hopefully at the end of this series you'll be able to create that and polish it to to Webflow, okay? Today, we're just going to be focusing on going through the basics. I wanna show you how to start developing one design extension, and then we'll go through all the options that you have with the, uh, with the API. We're just gonna make a quick intro. I'm just gonna show you how things work. We're gonna register an app, we're gonna install an app, and then we're gonna take a first look of the app um, that comes, you know, prepared by Webflow, it, you will see that it comes with some predefined structure to, uh, to help you kickstart faster. And then we'll see just a few options that you can, that you can interact with. Okay. So you, everything that I'm going to tell you today, you can find it in the official Webflow documentation. So if you look for developers.webflow.com, you will find all these documentation. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create an app. Um, so you can find this in the documentation. Creating an app, it's as simple as just going into your workspace and then you will go inside the section that it's called app development. Okay. I cannot show you our, um, my workspace right now because it's a shared workspace for the whole FinSuite team. So I'm, I'm going to skip this, this specific step, but I can show you the screenshot from the documentation, okay? You go to the, uh, to the workspace settings, you go to app development, and inside app development, you just create a new app like this. You can see this button in here. You click on it, you fill a bunch of info. You have to fill the name and the description and some URL um, that represents your site for the app, and then an icon if you wanna Give it an icon, okay? Very simple. I'm just going to assume that you can do this without me showing it to you, so we can avoid um, going through the fence with workspace. And that's actually it. Here in your app, apps capabilities, um, there's something that we should talk about, and it's that when building Webflow apps, there are two main pillars. And let me just talk about it here. When building a Webflow app, you have two main things. You have the designer extensions, uh, the designer APIs, I think that they call it, designer APIs, like this. And then you have the data client, like this, okay? Uh, essentially, these two things, you can use both separately, and also you can use both together, which when you use them together, it's what in the documentation you will find it as hybrid apps. Okay, essentially the designer APIs, it's anything that allows you to interact with the designer, meaning that you do stuff like create elements in the designer, style elements, move elements around, 
um, inject content, etc. So anything that you are uh, interacting directly inside the designer, that's going to happen with the designer APIs in here. Let me just add a cool arrow. Boom. Okay. The data client, it's essentially what you would previously know as the CMS API. So if you if you are already developers and you've already dicked into um, interacting with the CMS API by Webflow, the data client is most it's essentially the same. It's like like the newest version of that, and essentially it will allow you to interact with a bunch of APIs that you can use to uh, load data from the um, from your site and also push data to your site. You can do stuff like update the CMS. Um, read the CMS, you can uh, create webhooks, you can, um, I don't know, you can inject scripts on the site, etc. So there are this, a bunch of things that are, instead of happening directly inside the designer, are happening whatever. So you don't need to actually have a physical UI, not physical, but uh, displayable UI, and instead it's just interacting directly with the Webflow server to make this kind of mutations, okay? Today, we're gonna be focusing on this specifically. We're gonna be focusing on building a designer extension, a Webflow app that you can pop pop up in inside the designer and then you can just play around with it. You can do stuff interacting directly with what's happening in your Webflow project, okay? So I wanna focus on this today. So let's just go back here, and I'm assuming that you can you follow the create an app, and then inside uh, when defining the app capabilities, you now have to define, for example, if you need to access the data client, then you will have to to pass some some more some more information because it will require you to do an auth process. Okay, but that's out of the scope of today. So I'm just going to move continue with this. Cool, so once you have created this app, you will find your workspace that there's this section in here. You will have the, the app already created and you will see how you have a bunch of options in there. This is gonna be initially a development app, a private app. So it's not gonna be published into the marketplace right away. It's just gonna be inside your, work, your workspace. Anybody who is inside the workspace, so if you have an agency and you have multiple people working inside the, work, uh, the workspace, everyone can access it so everyone can just go ahead and install the app on a site okay you click on install and you will have you will get a list of your sites inside the the workspace so you just select the sites where you want this app to be installed okay that's it this is as far as i cannot show you because it's i, I would be dealing with a finsmith workspace now let me show you how does the app look like when it's installed so i have here a fresh project from scratch inside the designer, you will find this sidebar, obviously, with this apps icon in here. You just go in here, and you will find all the apps that you have installed in your project. In in my case, in, in today's case, I've already installed, I created an app and I installed it previously before the stream, and I called it test app. So essentially, I just went through here and when adding the information, and I, I added uh, the name to be test app just for the stream, okay? And this now, because it's still a development app, look that look what we can uh, see here, which is we can launch the development app. Okay, you can test it. For now, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's currently broken because we need to do more stuff. We'll do it now. Okay, but essentially, but essentially, literally, we have the app ready, and we can already uh, start doing stuff with it. Cool. How about we start coding? Shall we? Okay, so we've created the app. I want to interact with the designer, okay? So we have to build this. So when I launch this, you can see how right now I have this app that it's floating in here, but it's not loading anything. I want to start building something in here. I want to display a UI, and I want that when I click around in the UI, I want to do stuff, right? So to do that, we need to interact with the designer APIs. So if you go back to the documentation and you find these designer extension section, we're just gonna follow the getting started guide. Very simple. You have some prerequisites, so you'll need to have Node.js installed, you have to have Webflow, obviously, and then you have to have created the app, which we went through it. 
and then we are ready to start coding, okay? In my case, I already have the terminal here ready, and when, when the first step that you would like, uh, you would want to do is install the Webflow CLI. The Webflow CLI, it's going to be this command line interface that will allow us to do stuff like uh, ser serving the app in, in local mode. It will allow us to bundle the app to publish it. It will allow us to kickstart a new project from a template, etc. Okay. So I'm going to do, instead of NPM, I'm going to do PMPM. But you can use NPM, it's up to you. Okay. So I'll just do pm pm install it webflow webflow cli and we'll do it globally like this dash g and when we see once we do this it's going to install it all good and we can move on to the next part which is initiating a project again um today i'm going to be using the the boilerplate the template that webflow provides but the moment that we start building an app like an official app and you know we, we build cool stuff I'm probably going to start uh, to use something different. I'm going to use Vid. Uh, maybe we could use uh, Svelte or React, whatever you guys prefer. Um, because the Webflow in it, it's not the only way. It's not the only way that you can create a design extension. Let's use this. I'm going to do Webflow extension in it. And I'm going to use a name in here. So let's do um, Webflow extension. Maybe you can zoom in a bit. Yeah. And it, and I'm going to call this stream designer extension like this. Okay. Let's wait a few seconds. Good. So now essentially Webflow has created this. Uh, Webflow has created a folder with all the boilerplate. Let's just look at it. So let's go to the CD and the stream designer extension. And I'm going to do code like this to open VS Code. Cool. So let's let's look at what Webflow has created for us. Essentially, we have this in here. We have a Webflow.json file, tsconfig, readme file, package.json, and then inside the source, we have an index.ts with some very basic code. That's it. And then lastly, we have the public folder, which we'll go through that in a second. So first of all, let me open the terminal, and we'll pmpm -pm install. I want to install everything. And I'm just going to right away spin up the development server so we can show you how it looks like this, this demo app from, from Webflow. Um, inside the package of the JSON, you will find that there's a script for building and for developing. And in this case, I, I don't like what they did here, which is they included npm install in the scripts. But in my case, I'm not using npm, I'm using pmpm. And it's completely unnecessary, so I'm just going to remove it, okay? Just, but you can keep it, it's up to you. I don't need it. OK, so let's run pmpm dev. And in this case, you can see how it's going to serve the extension. And it also will compile to, uh, all the TypeScript setting, uh, all the TypeScript code, because we're going to be coding in TypeScript, which is good. Cool. So let's run pmpm dev like that. And we've got this local host thing here. If I go ahead and open this, you can see how this is the app. Right, um, but I don't want to load it in a separate Chrome tab. I want to load it inside here, right? So we don't want to be opening a local host directly here in, in a new tab. We want to go to the Webflow site, to the Webflow project. We want to go to the apps, test app, and I'm going to launch the development app and see how it allows us to specify the development URL. In case that for any reason you're using a different port, or you're using you know, a, a hosted version of it, whatever, you can always change this URL. But in this case, we're using what Waffle provided, which is localhost uh, 1337. So let's just launch it. Good. We've got the app running. And this demo app is just saying, select a textual element in designer, and then press the button below to give it some placeholder content. Let's try it. I'm going to click this, click on that. We've got load on it. Cool. OK, so this is working. So first of all, let's just dive into what's actually, how is this happening? How do we select something, click on a button, and then update the text in here? Let's just inspect the code. Let me close the terminal. I know, don't need it anymore. So in here, if we go to the source page like that, this is what Webflow provided in the template. So this is just some example from Webflow. And in this case, it's just interacting with the page, 
which there is an element that's called lorem. And then when clicking, actually, no, it's, it's a form. So when submitting that form, there is this Webflow object. This is very important because we're going to be interacting with, with this Webflow object a lot. This Webflow object that allows us to get the selected element. And then when we get the selected element in here, we have another method that it's called set text content like this, and then save. And whenever we save, all the updates that we made are pushed to the designer right away. So if we go back in here, this is a form. I'm going to submit it. Once we submit it, the extension is going to grab the element that's currently selected, which would be this heading in this case. It's going to inject the text and it's going to kick, uh, it's going to fire a save action. So everything just goes inside the designer like that. Cool. Okay, so now now that we know we saw exactly how this example works, let's just dive into okay what's happening here, right? What's uh, how things are connected? Uh, so the first thing that I want to show you is this public folder in here. Okay, this public folder, it's the actual extension. So whenever we are loading an extension here, what you see in here, it's just an iframe. It's an iframe with a site. That's it. So it's loading. And in an HTML file, it's loading some CSS styles and it's loading a JavaScript file. That's it. It's, it's, a, it's a regular site inside an iframe. And this site right now, it's living in this public folder. We have this index.html file that is essentially this. So you, you can see how it contains this. We could say hello, like that. And I don't know if it's going to update or I need to spin up again. No, actually, we can. So this, this index.html contains the UI. For my extension like that and then the script that it's being imported and in this case because we're using typescript we are writing the logic in the typescript files and then we are compiling that and putting it inside this index.js but essentially this index.js it's the same thing as the index.cs it's just the compiled version of it okay and then the style css same as a regular website we're just loading some styles in here from the same folder okay so let, let me just remind you again what happened here. Um, we we have a form, which is this form in here called lorem. And then we have, when we submit it, we're getting the select element like that. And let's just console log this, the element. Okay, let's do it. Let's go in here. Let's open the, the console. Cool, so if we do this, we click on the button. Um, see how I'm console, in log, the, uh, console logging the element? Okay, and let's see what info do, can we see from the element. Let's open the prototype and you will see how there are a bunch of properties in, inside the, the element. So one is children, true. This is saying that this has some children inside. Uh, does it allow custom attributes? Is it configurable? Um, does it allow having styles? Does it allow having text content? So um, each element will have all the properties that tells you if you can do something with the element or not, right? Um, so if you try to interact with an element that doesn't have any text inside, so you, you cannot add text to the element, then you're just gonna get an error because that element does not contain the properties and methods to do it, okay? And actually, if we just dive a little bit into the, into the library from Webflow and see how these get selected element object in here, um, the good thing is we're using TypeScript, right? So we have full type safety. We can see exactly what are we dealing with at all times. So if we type L, you can see how we're getting all of this. But see how I cannot, I cannot set the text content in here. Trying to set the text content. See how I'm getting an error from TypeScript? This is because TypeScript knows that you cannot be sure that, uh, that this element has this method. And the way that we can be sure of it is by checking if the element has text content, then we can do set text content like this. So TypeScript will at all, at all times warn us when we're trying to work with an element that does not have the, 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 um, the methods that we're trying to use. So let's just continue here and I want to look for the Webflow object, and I believe that we can find it in here. So 
just look for designer API in the documentation and you will find that there is this definition of the Webflow object. This Webflow object contains all these methods to interact with the designer. You can get the, the select element, you can get all the elements, you can get the current breakpoint, you can, get, you can create new elements, you can create new CSS classes, uh, you can update CSS classes, update elements. Um, and I believe that you can also, yeah, you can get the current page, you can get the current page and folder, you can create a new folder, create a new page, switch a page, you can notify the user with, uh, about something, and then you can also subscribe to events like that. You can resize the window. It has a lot of potential. It has a lot of flexibility. You can resize the current window of uh, the extension, uh, et cetera. Okay. One thing that I missed before jumping into this, we'll start playing with all these methods. I forgot to mention that there is the option of tweaking some of the settings of how the app is loaded on the site. So right now you can see how the app looks like this, very small, right? But we can tweak the settings. We can go to the waffle.json file that we have in the project. And right now it has this name, which is stream designer extension. Um, I think that this name is just for a reference. It doesn't actually display anywhere. But also now you can pass stuff like size. And you, if you pass the size, we can um, use three different sizes. We can do default, comfortable, or large. So by default, it's obviously the default size which is that, that small size, but we can do come for a bon. Yeah, let me do it again. Boom. Let me close it. Let's go. Boom. And now you can see how the app is a little bit bigger. So we, we now can use this, or if we go with the biggest size, which is large, let's just check how the large one looks like. Let me kill this. And let's run PM, PM dev again. And now you will see this large like that cool okay today we can just stay with the small but one because i don't have anything specific to i don't have a cool ui to show so let's just stick with the the small ui okay but that's it i just wanted to point that out that you can change the the sizes of the apps but now let's go again through the webflow object like that so first of all let's just con uh, do get site info and console log that so if you go back to the, the index.ts, let me get rid of all of this. And I want to get the info. So we'll say await info, like that. And we'll console log the info. Cool. Let's just try it and see what, what it comes with. So we're going to open the app in here, test app, launch the app like that and let me pull the console okay cool so if we click on this we're gonna get the info and the info essentially contains the the site name the site id and then the official site name and i believe that's it actually it's it's pretty not much useful info so let's just move on let's go now to the get selected element um I, this one is the one that we already did it so if we just do element await Webflow dot get selected element like that, and we console log the element. Again, I showed it before, but essentially what this allows is to show me the element with all the properties and methods that it has. Okay, but we'll dive more into elements later because there are many things that you can do with an element. You can well, you, you probably can see a bunch of them here, but essentially you can get custom attributes, set custom attributes, get the styles, set the styles, get the children, set the children. You can remove an element, you can move it around. You have all these methods to just tweak stuff on the site, which is very cool. But let's move on. Let's do another thing. Let's get all the elements. So let's come in here, elements, and let's console log what, how, how does the structure look like, right? Um, and in this case, let me refresh this now. Okay, cool. So look at, look at this. Let's just pull this up and let's inspect. This are all the elements from the current page. So the body, page wrapper, global stopper, home message, home message, padding global, 
container, all of these elements are what you can see in here like that, okay? And the cool thing is that each of these elements also allows you to retrieve all the direct children from that specific element. So for example, if we imagine that we want to get all the elements, let's just do this. Let's create this div, and then inside this div, I'm going to add a heading and a button, like that, okay? And let's just get the info from this specific div. So let me just go back here and let's say get selected element, like that. Okay, let's refresh, and let me click on this. Cool, so we've got this, right? Which is, it represents this div block. Inside this div block, we also have the method to get the children. And let's just do it. Let's just, let's do children. It's gonna be a wait, oh, that get. Ah, right, we have to check if the element, because remember that TypeScript always will check uh, we will we'll want to make sure that the element exists. Uh, so I'm going to say element has children. I believe that this is a Boolean. Yeah, so if the element has children, then let's get the children from it. Children, and then we'll say element get children, like that. And I think that this is a sync. And we'll console log the children, like that. Oh, it is not a sync. Okay, so we can get rid of the await. Cool like that. So let me refresh this and let's inspect how does the, the Webflow structure the elements. Refresh, 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 Tip block selected, let's click on this. Cool, okay, this is the element and these are the children. So um, what essentially Webflow does is it creates a tree from with the direct children from all the elements. So for example, if we have the div like that, the direct children is going to be the heading and the bottom. But imagine that we also have another div. Imagine that we also have another div that also contains more children. So Webflow creates this uh, tree like that, that we can traverse to get any children we want, right? We, you can always go traverse down in the trees to see exactly what elements contains, what parent, etc. okay? Cool, I wanna show you how a style looks like. So let me just go and get a style by name. I wanna do this. Um, so in here, when clicking the button, I'm just gonna say style and webflow.getStyle by name. And this will allow us to fetch a CSS class. And let's just, what CSS class could we Grab page wrapper. Does it have some class, some styles? No, it does not. Do I have something with a minimum amount of styles? This. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this home message item class. Let's do it in here. Home message item class. Let's wait for this and let's console log the style because I want to show you how does the style object look like. Okay, refresh the app. And I'm going to click on this, and this should show me the style. Yeah, so the style, it's essentially another object that also has an ID, and this style also has a bunch of methods. Clear all the properties, meaning that I can get rid of all the styles from that class. I can get the name, get the properties, um, get a specific property, set a property, which is very interesting, which means that it allows us to edit a CSS class. I can just come in here and change something from this CSS class. So for now, let's let's get the style, let's get the properties from it. Let's say style dot um, get properties like this. And let's console log that. Is it in a promise? No. Okay, so let's do it again, refresh. And I'm going to console log this and see the properties from the class. It has display flags, align items, flex direction, grid, um, the gap, gap, and justify, so, which is essentially this, right? It's essentially the styles that you can see right in here. So 
how about we try to mute this? Let's instead of, let's just edit, I don't know, with as 50% or no, because we're using flex. Let's do, yeah, whatever. Let's just add with 50% just for the, for fun. So the way that you mutate stuff in the, in, in the designer is you want to first obviously set the new styles. So I'm going to say style.set property. And in this case, I'm going to say, yeah, okay, let's use this background color red, like that. But then if you do this, you will not see any changes because you also have to explicitly tell to Webflow to sync between the updates that you've made and, and the designer, okay? So let me get rid of this. I calling set property, and after that, I want to call style.save, like that, okay? This save method, it's always going to send whatever you made into Webflow, like that. So now, if we did it right, we refresh the extension. When I click on this button, we should see how we are dynamically setting the property of background color to the CSS class that's called home message item, like that. Let's try it. Boom. Yay. Okay. And now if we inspect this in here, you will see how it contains this color red, like that. Okay. And it's essentially what you would expect to be. So it's just the CSS class that was updated, but instead of clicking on it and doing it manually, the designer extension did it for you. So anything that you see in here that Webflow refers as styles, it's CSS classes. So styles in, in this documentation means a CSS class. If we want to interact with inline styles, then we have to interact with the DOM element, okay? And interacting with the DOM element, we're just gonna go to the DOM elements um, object, okay? So the first thing that I wanna do is go back in here and I want to select the, I want to get the currently selected element. So let me just do element, uh, wait, webflow dot get selected element, like that. Okay, cool. And let's also mutate that, right? We can do stuff like, we can obviously create a new element. We'll do that in a second. You can also modify the element by doing, for example, set an attribute, set element attribute. So imagine that you are trying to set up attributes, like FinSuite attributes, or you're trying to set up a library like uh, Superform. Hopefully you can do this after this, this stream. Um, so imagine that you, you need to apply some attributes to the elements, right? And in this case, I'm just going to make, it up, uh, make this up, but maybe I want to apply something like FS, CMS filter, element filter, whatever, right? Let's imagine that I need to do that. So I want to create an app that does it in a very simple way for the user. So they don't need to worry about adding attributes. And this is actually what we're working on right now. So this is a spoiler to you, but <laughs> um, let's do it the, um, with the API. Let's do it directly with the design extension. So in here, I want to say element, I think that we need to see if it can have custom attributes. So if, if the element can have custom attributes like that, then we'll say element.set custom attribute. And this custom attribute, uh, it's, it's gonna be fs.cms filter element, and it's going to be filters in this case, like that. So now anytime that I click the button, I'm going to grab the selected element and I'm going to set the custom attribute to the element and then I'm going to save that. Because remember that you always have to save stuff when you want to send it over back to, to Webflow. Okay, let's do it. Let's grab this heading here. Let's just see if it happens instantaneously. Boom, that's it, cool. Let's do another one. Let's click on it. Boom, we got it. Cool. Let's just go back to the everything that we can do. And we can create elements. There's the method of create a DOM element. Let's do this. We want to create an element and we want to insert that element 
somewhere, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, maybe we can get rid of all of this. What's happening? Oh, maybe you cannot do stuff with the uh, extension open. Didn't know that. Okay, cool. So I have this main wrapper. I want to dynamically inject an element inside this main wrapper in here. Okay, let's just inject a another div block. Let's just do a div block. Okay, so I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the selected element, and I'm going to say if the element can have children, then we're going to create a new div block. So new div, and we'll say Buffalo dot create dumb. And when you do create DOM, you want to pass the tag of it. And this is cool because you don't need to be using the, the supported elements from here. You know, Dave, Liz, blah, blah, blah. You can actually use any kind of tag. And this is why we have been able to create the FinSuite table extension because we could do stuff like create a table, which is going to create a table tag like that. Okay. But in this case, I'm just going to do a div. And I want to insert this div inside the selected element. So what I want to do is element dot children, uh, set children, sorry. And I want to pass the new div like that. It's an array, so you can pass multiple children. In this case, I'm just going to pass the new div. And I'm going to say element dot save like that. And we await for that like that. So essentially, we created the div, we set the selected element children to be this div and then we save everything so let's try it here let's open again the extension the app and let's click on it boom cool we have a div but look what's happening here we're not creating an official div so we're not creating the the regular div blocks from webflow we're using a new built-in element that it's called dom element and it's just a generic, it's just a generic um, element that allow the Webflow now allows to use with any kind of tag. Okay, end of today's stream. We saw the basics. I know that there are so many things still that we should be talking about, but on the next stream, we're just not gonna just go through the basics and that's it. We are going to build an actual functional app. Um, so if you like this and you have a few ideas that you would like to see built as an app. Feel free to just leave a comment or tweet, uh, tag us on Twitter because maybe we see it and we can build an app together. So if you enjoyed this, please leave a like and we'll see you on the next Friday. Thank you all for being here.